Welcome all. Today we are, would like to discuss about heart attack. I am Dr. Archana. I am from Ramaya Narayana Heart Center from Department of Cardiology. Uh, we have interventional cardiologist Dr. Anupama Hegde ma'am, field of interventional cardiology from past 10 years and we would like to take her inputs on this topic of heart attack. It's important because we have uh, massive uh, increasing deaths because of this major uh, disease. Hello ma'am, welcome ma'am. Thank you. We would like to tell our viewers about heart attack and the various causes of heart attack and various populations and Indian scenarios and treatments and the precautions they need to take ma'am. Okay. Shall we start? What is heart attack ma'am? Heart attack is when there is cut off of blood supply to the muscle of the heart. There is occlusion of the blood vessel by 100 percent and the blood supply is cut off. This is called as heart attack. That is, the muscle gets damaged because there is deprivation of the oxygen supply. Okay. What are the usual symptoms that uh, heart attack can present with? The common symptoms are chest pain, which is either constricted type. It is like just a holding a fist, there is tightness, which can radiate to jaw, the neck, associated to upper back, and associated with profuse sweating, either the symptoms of palpitations, difficulty in breathing dizziness and syncope. Ma'am, uh, usually patients get confused with the, they come to emergencies and OPDs saying that we have gastric pain and they show the uh, upper part of the abdomen or the lower part of the chest and few patients deny coming to hospital and they take some anti-gastric measures or try to uh, yes. drink uh, some antipeptic you know, yeah. salts or something or take a tablet for gastritis. Yeah. How far is this correct ma'am? See this is what we call as the atypical presentation. Okay. So, the pain of the heart cardiac can it extend anywhere between the jaw to the epigastric. So, sometimes when they say as the burning sensation in the epigastric or what they say as the heart burn, they may mistake as gastritis, but you need to have a high index of suspicion when the person comes with this atypical symptoms. So, many of the diagnosis of heart attack is missed because they come with heart burn. So, just taking a popping a pill of anti-gastric medicines or taking an anti-gastric syrup is not going to help these patients. So, screening is needed for these yes. set of patients. Yes, you have to be high, high uh, there should be an index of high yes. alertness, especially in female patients, diabetics. What are the risk factors for this heart attack? So the main risk factor is diabetes, hypertension, obesity, stress, depression and other factors like smoking and tobacco chewing. And in female patients, high intake of oral contraceptives is also said to be a high risk factors. Plus, the hereditary factors like familial history of heart attack in young and also sedentary lifestyle. Um, uh, in our uh, present uh, scenario of Indian cosmopolitan lifestyle where we are you know, shifting from our rural uh, lifestyles to more towards urban and westernized lifestyles. What can be the existing and the changing risk factors which can cause this heart attack? Yeah. See and compared to our western counterparts, the heart attacks in Indian people occur 10 to 15 years earlier because we have more younger patients getting heart attacks. This transition from rural to urban has made the people lazy. So, the manual work has come down and this use of junk food has caused led to high incidence of obesity okay. and there is high incidence of high cholesterol levels what we call dyslipidemia okay. and there is also increase of diabetes in Indian population. Okay. All these have led to a transition okay. that when we had a healthy lifestyle the incidence of heart attack in India was less. But now, we are trying to imitate the western population okay. and getting into the junk food, the laziness. Okay. So, the incidence of heart attack has increased in India. Okay. Whereas, the westerners are taking up or on our lifestyle of yoga, healthy vegetarian diet and they have increased their lifespan. So, viewers, it is a high time you have to put a dot to your westernized uh, lifestyle. And ma'am, uh, how is it different from a young MI, that is a young person presenting with a heart attack from an older generation, I mean old, old aged people. 
how is it different see usually the younger population they have high burden of blood clots okay. because there is increased fat deposition in their blood vessels when it ruptures it uh, causes acute thrombus formation and they do not have the parallel circulation what we call as the collateral circulation which is open the young. Okay. So, the intensity of heart attack and the damage is much more in the younger generation when compared to older generation. Okay. The older generation tend to have long standing deposition of fat conversion into fibrous bands and they will be more having stable plaque what we call stable plaque. And also there is collateral supplies which are opened up. So, the extent of damage to similar type of attack is much more in the younger generation as when compared to the older generation. How are women in this uh, disease like how much women are affected with heart attack in India and how are they different from men in uh, disease pattern and uh, outcome of the disease? See initially women thought the premenopausal women were protected from heart attacks. Okay. So, they tend to ignore their symptoms. Okay. Okay, but with the increasing incidence of diabetes in women yeah. and in other modification in their lifestyle because they have become lazy because the initially their women were working hard. Yes. So, now it is more of electrification. Yeah. So, you press a button the mix is on. So, the manual work has gone down. So, there is increasing obesity in women the, and eating of junk food there is increased dyslipidemia. All this has caused the shift of heart attack even to the premenopausal women. And even when they are present, the symptoms are not typical in the sense they do not, they may not present with a typical history of chest pain. The women come to you with history of fatigue, excessive sweating, nausea, vomiting, some epigastric discomfort, all these are atypical symptoms which are often missed. And women tend to reach hospital late because they give preference to others in the family and their health rather than their own health. So, they think that we are, they must have done overwork and all that, they say, tend to ignore the symptoms. So, and because they tend to ignore the symptoms, the extent of disease in them is more aggressive mm -hmm. and when they come in, the already the damage of muscle is very high and even when you treat, the outcome in the women when compared to men is poor. poor. But if they reach the hospital in time, they will have a very good outcome. Okay. And also the blood vessels in women compared to men are thinner. So, they tend to have a more extensive disease when compared to men. So, the overall impact on the heart muscle is much more in women with the same intensity of heart attack as compared to men. So, women has to be more careful yes. about their symptoms and their atypical presentations. Yes. And ma'am, uh, what kind of lifestyle modifications can be done by this younger generation and the present population either women, young or old persons predominantly to avoid the incidence of heart attacks like primary prevention. Especially when you know there is a strong family history, whether you have strong family or no family, you have to start modifying your life to right from younger generation. See the deposition of fat starts right from the age of 7 to 10 years. So, the lifestyle modification has to start at young age. So, you have to encourage your children to have more healthy lifestyle like they have to play, they have to have good amount of exercise, eat healthy food, avoid junk food. See what happens modern day women are working at home as well they are working outside. So, they do not have time to prepare. So, they, they just get something from the bakery or the instant food and all that which are rich in cholesterol. It is in trans fats which causes obesity in the children. Okay. So, the risk starts increasing right from the childhood. Mm -hmm. So, your lifestyle modification should start young when the children are young encourage them to be active. See that your children do not get obese try to encourage more healthy food like fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, okay. go ve on vegetarian diet. If you are non-vegetarian, use everything in moderation okay. and avoid trans fats. Trans fats. And other thing in Indian people is when you fry something, the whatever the oil is left behind, you tend to reuse. Yes, so very true. So, you have to prevent the reuse of this fried deep fried oil because this oil after frying converts itself into trans fat which is unhealthy. So, on the existing diet products which they sell, we uh, it is like we have to check the trans fat composition yes. when we buy any outside ready made food yes. also. And see, you can try to get homemade mixes made at home. See, okay. I agree as a working woman, you may not be able to cook everyday fresh food. Yes. So, you can plan your meals for the week. Okay. 
Sire right. in hand and could avoid. And also you can use more of raw vegetables and fruits. fruits. Whatever available at home, you can make very nutritious food for the children. Seasonal. Seasonal, seasonal food plus whatever the spices we Indians use, each has a medicinal value. Okay. So, using them in moderation is definitely going to improve your health. Ma'am, and what are the treatments available for this heart attack? There are two types of them. One is we call this thrombolysis, that is giving injection to dissolve that clot and open the circulation. Other is called angioplasty. See this giving the injection can be done if the patient reaches to you within 6 to 12 hours after the heart attack. Okay. Because beyond that, the effect of the medicines is not great. More side effects. More now. side effects. You may not be able to open up the vessel well. So, the muscle damage extends. Okay. So, angioplasty is where in first you do an angiogram to see where is the level of blockage, which vessels cause the heart attack. Then you put in a wire and with a balloon open up that vessel, establish circulation and you put in a stent so that it does not reclose. Re then subsequently you are going to put them on blood thinners, cholesterol lowering medicines and also other medicines to improve the function of the heart. Okay. So, these are the modalities available. See most of the hospitals have 24 hours facility of cardiology available. At least they are able to cater to patients to give the medicines, injections at least. Okay. In case the person reaches the hospital okay. where there is no facilities, okay. they can load them with aspirin and other blood thinners blood along with cholesterol lowering drugs yes. and shift immediately to nearby hospital. Center for further treatment. Okay. Ma'am, and uh, when patient comes to a hospital setting with chest pain, uh, what are the tests we would like to do on them to plan our treatment, whatever? See, the first and foremost thing once you come, make the patient relax. Okay. okay? Then you do the ECG. Okay. ECG will tell you whether the patient has acute heart attack or it is a pre-heart attack stage, what we call unstable angina or non-estilation MI. So, once the ECG is done, based on the ECG, your star line of treatment starts. Okay. Okay. So, if your ECG is not very diagnostic, you have the blood test called troponins and also you have the echocardiogram to show the extent of damage. Okay. 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 So, these are all the additive tests and all these tests can be done within 15 to 20 minutes of the arrival of the patient. Arrival of the patient. So, it is like a quick fix it's for a quick fix. existing heart attacks. Yes. So, any time of the day, it is available it can in, a, in our center yeah. also. When patient comes for review, how many times are they expected to come for review if they are stented? See, usually the first review will be within the first two weeks to see how the patient is doing, how he is adhering to his treatment, how much is the improvement in symptomatology. Okay. The subsequent follow up will be at six weeks because it usually takes four to six weeks for the muscle to recover to its in old self, at least most of the muscle to recover. Okay. So, then you do the ECG, echo and see how much is the improvement. Okay. Then will be at 3 months, 6 months and a year. Okay. And they have to be at regular follow up into at least 3 to 6 months into his lifetime. Okay. Because we need to uh, optimize their dose of medications because initially they will be on very high dose of medications and fall, once they stabilize, we put on the maintenance dose. And we need to follow up their blood sugars, okay. how are the cholesterols, okay. whether the cholesterol control is optimal, okay. whether renal functions are optimal. Okay whether there are any blood loss, so he, they are get become anemic because they are on blood thinners, all need to be assessed. And you also follow up with echo to see how the heart functioning is maintained. And at, at the end of 3 months to 6 months, you can also do a treadmill wherever there is warranted to see your efficacy of treatment. Is it true that patients have to compulsively take drugs at the right time post heart attack, if we have stented them? It is preferable to stick on to right time. Right because if you miss a dose, there is high chance that the stent can reclose with a fresh clot formation. Okay. There are certain drugs which has to be taken twice a day, okay. because their time span is action of time span is about 12 hours. Okay. If you tend to miss a dose, okay. the stent can close off. Okay. So, it is always better to adhere to correct time. And other thing we would have told the patient, if we are taking aspirin and the other blood thinners, to take it after food to avoid gastritis. Okay. Statins, most of them we prefer them to give at night, night time. time, but the recent statins, they are not affected by your food intake. So, we sometimes, if you are giving in combination, we tend to give in either afternoon or the evening. After discharge, patient is on right medical treatment and following all the precautions told at the hospital and by the doctors. 
what kind of uh, specific lifestyle modifications have to be done by a patient after heart attack? See, majority of the patient, if their heart functioning is almost normal, they can go back to their near normal activities within the first four to six weeks. Okay. If by chance the patient has a reduced heart pump mm -hmm. or they have a tendency of irregular heart beats, then we tell them to go slow in a stepwise manner. So, the initial the first week we start off with slow walking, climbing just about a flight of say once or twice a day. Then gradually you build up their level of exercise. Okay. Okay. And also the yoga in exercise, we have a rehab center okay. wherein we train them to get back to the normal lifestyle yes. in a phased manner. Okay. We teach them simple yoga exercises okay. and the routine exercise they can do at home to improve their strength. Okay. So, once the heart recovers, okay. we expect them to be near normal life. Majority of the patients with a normal heart functioning or near normal, we expect them to be in their normal lifestyle by 6 to 8 weeks. A cardiac rehab center would give them an exercise prescription yes. like how we give diet prescription yeah. and uh, medication prescription True. to coordinate and uh, help uh, people post heart attack to have a better lifestyle True. and to have a near normal or a normal lifestyle. Yes. Okay, so, that is the importance of uh, cardiac rehab, rehab. center. Ma'am and uh, what specific diet precautions have to be taken post heart attack? Usually we tell them to avoid deep fried items, okay. to reduce the intake of cholesterol, fatty okay. food. Okay. Okay. And if they are diabetic, according to their diabetic status, they need to restrain from refined carbs. Refined carbs. Then we tell them what fruits they can take. Vegeta most of the fruits and vegetables can be taken even by the heart attack patient. There is no restriction, okay. provided you are not diabetic. Okay. If you are diabetic, few fruits are restricted. Okay. We tell them even if they are a non-vegetarian, they can take in moderation. It does not, so they say avoid deep fried items, but cooked food is fine, but always in moderation. in moderation. Anything even if you overeat fruits also, it is going to be unhealthy. Yes, yes. So, right. anything in moderation is absolutely true. true absolutely. What is the difference between heart attack and cardiac arrest? Heart attack is when the blood supply to the heart is stopped and the muscle suffers damage, that is heart attack. Cardiac arrest is when the heart stops functioning totally, okay. that is cardiac arrest. Okay. What would be the take home message for the viewers? See, first and foremost, do not panic, okay. change your lifestyle right from young age, okay. Okay. go to the right center at the right time. Okay. So, right intervention at the right time and adherence to your medicine, diet and exercise is definitely going to make you a lead a healthy life. Thank you ma'am. I you. hope viewers you had a great time in knowing about heart attack and its treatment outcomes and the precautions you need to take and I hope uh, we would start adhering to it. Thank you ma'am. Thank you.